Howdy folks, this here is your friendly history guide, ready to take you along on our journey west to Oregon country. This here trek ain't gonna be easy, so if you're looking for fun, you might just head on to New York City. But if land and wide open spaces, and the chance to have hundreds of acres of your own land, and a once in a lifetime adventure is what you're looking for, you've come to the right place. Saddle up your horse, load your wagons, and let's move on out. If you're like me, and recent popular TV shows have you thinking what life was really like for the Oregon Trail folks, well this is the video for you. Or, if you've never wondered until now, it's still the video for you. Fur traders and missionaries were truly the first to traverse this 2100 mile trek to the west coast. The Oregon Trail has sometimes been called America's longest graveyard. Of the estimated 350,000 people who started the route, 30,000 would never arrive, an average of 10 to 15 deaths per mile. Here are just a few facts about the Oregon Trail you might not know. There is about a 5% chance that you would die of dysentery. However, if that wasn't your ending, there were plenty of other opportunities to die, including, but not limited to, gun accidents, animal stampedes, wagon accidents, prairie fever, typhoid, or cholera, or bandits. Huh, yeah, sign me up. This sounds like so much fun. Dr. Marcus Whitman and his wife Narcissa were some of the first missionaries to traverse the trail and thanks to her letters home praising the ease of traveling the trail, others began to believe that it was quite possible for women and families to successfully navigate it. Dr. Whitman and his wife settled in what is now present-day Walla Walla, Washington, and set up their chocolate factory. Oh, oh, can I get a fact check on that? I think that's the wrong Whitmans. The Oregon Trail didn't follow one single path. Over the years, dozens of new trails and passes were created by settlers trying to get there quicker or headed for another part of the Oregon Territory. By the way, Oregon Territory was not just what we think of as the state of Oregon. It encompassed what is now Oregon, Washington, Idaho, and parts of Wyoming and Montana. The westward expansion brought the U.S.'s first power couple to the forefront of American exploration and politics. John and Jesse Fremont became well known throughout the country after she began to chronicle his explorations for publication. Jesse became a powerful influence on public events and became a key figure in the emerging form of women's rights. John became known as the Pathfinder to the West with his scout, Kate Carson. While the scenery of the trail was likely quite gorgeous in places, these travelers left a trail of debris as they went, and not necessarily trash. Overloaded wagons were often rid of their excess or unneeded supplies or items as the trail got tougher. Fort Laramie became known as Camp Sacrifice for its reputation as a dumping ground. During the gold rush of 1849, pioneers reportedly dumped 20,000 pounds of bacon outside the walls. Mmm, breakfast anyone? While some picture the iconic Conestoga wagons on the trail, what these travelers used was the smaller, more agile prairie schooner wagons. While the schooners allowed for better mobility, they also lacked any sort of suspension, and many of the travelers chose to walk rather than ride. That's right, I said walk the 2100 mile trek. I bet they were thinking a shoe sponsor would have been nice, huh? Contrary to popular belief and depiction by Hollywood Westerns, there were very few Indian attacks on the Oregon Trail. In fact, there were many Pawnee and Shoshone trail guides who actually aided the travelers in their westward journey. As discussed earlier, you were much more likely to die from disease than anything else on this trail. Just like today's bathroom graffiti, where stalls of gas stations are covered with nail polish names and dates of those who popped a squat before you, westward pioneers were no different. They left their names, hometowns, and dates they were there on the rocks that littered the trail. One of the most famous was a 128 foot tall piece of granite called Independence Rock in Wyoming. You can just hear the moms now. Come on, Sally, I ain't got all day. You don't have to write your life story. It ain't called the Oregon Trail for nothing. Well, maybe it was. 
Most of the Oregon Trail pioneers didn't actually settle in Oregon, believe it or not. The vast majority splintered off into Wyoming or Idaho. Some took separate routes into California following the gold rush. Nearly 250,000 would travel the California routes and another 70,000 would land in Utah. Ezra Meeker became one of the trail's most famous pioneers, once again proving you are never too old for an adventure. You'd think that most people, after a grueling trip like the Oregon Trail, would never even want to think about doing it again. But Ezra wasn't just anybody. At the age of 76, concerned that the legacy of the Oregon Trail was being forgotten, he tore up his AARP membership, hopped on a wagon, and headed east. He made many stops along the way to retell his story and the history of the trail. He installed Meeker markers at Pioneer Landmarks and became a national celebrity. He eventually pulled his wagon into Washington, D.C., where he met President Theodore Roosevelt, whom we can only imagine loved every second of Ezra Meeker's story, being a westward explorer himself. Ezra would go on to travel the Oregon Trail several more times by wagon, train, and automobile. His final trip would come when he was 94, when he made the trip in a biplane flown by famed pilot Oakley Kelly. Well, I see you are one of the lucky ones to survive the journey west. So head on out there and stake your claim. The west is waiting. Y'all come back now, you hear?